Now this here is from my camera, but also me after a week of both studying and working, I'm just out of battery and dead. Most people probably have one of those topics that they are not really comfortable talking about and sharing with friends, co-workers or even family. This video is going to be about me working full time and studying for my undergraduate computer science degree. Now I tend to avoid talking about it, the reasons I'm going to share at the end of the video. If you are here new to this channel, to my video, welcome. You might either be in a similar position, you might be interested in what I'm doing and what my experience is, or you might be interested in doing something similar. Now this video is for you. Here are my top advantages and disadvantages of doing both at the same time. Let's start with the pros first. Number one, you have higher flexibility in just in structuring your day. Usually I have like 15 hours a day where I can do whatever I want or whatever I have to do. Now for me, work always goes first. That's number one priority. So I have like eight to 10 hours of work that have to happen with meetings and everything. And I can structure the rest of my day around it. So those are like work and then eating, sleeping, and just appointments or anything else I want to do within my day, including my studies. Other people have dogs or kids or anything else, I do my studies. Um, now I can decide what day I want to do which lecture or read about which topic, and I just have complete flexibility in how I can structure my day, which is really great. And that leads me to number two. You can decide what you want to study more of. In normal universities, you have like this structured timetable of you have to learn this, 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 this. In my university degree, I don't have somebody telling me clearly of you have to know all of those learning outcomes. And it's more like here is what you have to know for sure. And then here is a huge reading list and other topics that you can get into that are related. But it's ultimately on you whether you want to get into those or not. Number three, you get to work while you're studying. For me, after my first undergraduate degree, it was really important that I could be doing both studying and working at the same time. Both of them have different goals, different kind of structures that you're working towards on a daily, monthly and yearly basis. And uh, just depending on those different motivators. And for me, I didn't really like just studying and I wanted to get into computer science, into a computer science degree. So for me, it was amazing that I could be doing both studying and working while not being financially dependent on somebody or something else. Number four, you really do get ahead. So after my first degree, when I was telling employers, hey, I want to be doing both working and studying. So just be aware, I'm going to be studying for my computer design degree while I'm working for you. Everybody was like, ah, oh my God, no, right? They were like, some, some people have even offered me a job with the condition of me not doing the degree. And the, for the first year working for my first employer while doing the degree, I actually wasn't talking about it. I was hiding it from my LinkedIn and from anywhere else online because they just had a really negative stigma around it. So um, that's, that's to the downside of it, but you get to do both. So while people are in university, you get to have the work experience and the degree at the same time. Now, not every degree is the same, same, same. They are different in many ways. <laughs> so, um, get to have the theoretical knowledge from the university and the practical knowledge from your job, which is amazing to combine. Now let's get to the downsides. Number one, you're consistently in front of your computer. Now that highly depends if you're going to an office or if you're staying at home and working remotely or whether you have the opportunity to go to university or not. For me, I chose to do both remotely because I wasn't sure where I'm going to be at at any given year. And my job highly depends, well, dependent at least until last year, on me being able to travel consistently to conferences and different places. So being able to have the flexibility of not depending on a place, but having both remote was a great opportunity for me. However, that resulted now in the fact that I'm consistently 
in this space on my workstation and I don't get to have that variety and just in my surrounding. Number two, there's really little time for social activities. So a lot of times my mind is just so blocked from everything that happened today versus studies and so on. And I don't really have the mind space to then as well call family, call friends and give them the attention that they might need or might deserve. Number three, it can get really exhausting. So like I mentioned, you have like 15 hours around the day that you can allocate to different tasks, activities, everything that you have to do. And that's usually enough time. The problem is that you sleep then for seven to eight hours and it starts again and again and again. So it can feel like it's just this wheel that you're stuck in. Even though you really love the work that you're doing, it can get really exhausting. Number four, last one, nothing is really ever age group appropriate. And I don't mean in terms of content and age group appropriate as you would usually call it, but um, you consistently feel like you're behind. Meaning when I engage with people who, are, might, who might be doing the same thing at work as me, but of a different age, they are obviously further ahead right? They have these additional years where they were able to focus on their work or their studies that they just, they chose to take those years, right? And just to have it. And they are further ahead in the game, <laughs> if to say it really bluntly. But it feels difficult to keep up a lot of times and it can take a troll on your imposter syndrome. So you feel like you can't, you can't do good enough because you don't have those extra years but in reality there's not really anything you can do because you are your age you have your experience you have your work there's nothing you can do to just magically get an additional three years of reading about a certain topic right so it, it can feel quite quite tough to just keep telling yourself that it's, it's okay there's nothing you can do you do well for where you're at you do amazing it's all good now this sums it up. I really hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please hit like and subscribe to my channel where I share similar content as well as content on DevOps. I also have a weekly DevOps newsletter. You can find the link below. If you have similar experiences or just thoughts around the content I shared, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Otherwise, have a lovely day and I really hope to hear from you next time.